Hi, my name is Spiros and I want to show you how easy it is to use the Relational AI native app entirely on Snowflake Snowpark Container Services to perform GraphRag using a knowledge graph. Let's imagine for a minute that we work for a company with a large body of knowledge contained in various documents across different domains. Our business partners come to us and ask about LLMs. They have heard that they are all the rage and can be used to provide answers to complex questions. They are also quick to mention their fear concerning hallucinations and erroneous responses. They come to us and ask if it might be possible to use the company documents as a source of truth. You ask them whether the knowledge contained in the documents is scattered across many of them and the answer is yes, which makes you think that simple RAG is not the answer to your problem and you should probably use GraphRAG for the task. Your decision is based upon the nature of the input queries you will have to provide answers to. With GraphRAG, you will be able to answer questions such as how is X related to Y, even if information about X and Y is found in far apart chunks. An input query can be roughly classified either as a single point query, that is a query whose answer can be located in a single chunk of our corpus, or a multipoint query, which is a query whose answer can be found after combining many document chunks. The former can be answered with standard RAG techniques, while the latter requires more sophistication, calling upon techniques such as graph RAG to be able to answer. Let's consider this diagram to showcase the major difference between standard RAG and graph RAG. As you can see, standard RAG relies on the retrieval of semantically similar chunks from the corpus based on the input query. As you're probably aware, the retrieval happens by applying some similarity measure between the embeddings of the input query against the embeddings of each corpus chunk. Now, graph rag goes one step further. Entities and relationships are first extracted from the corpus, then modeled as a knowledge graph, which finally is used to ground the LLM to the truth. A key step in the process is to perform community detection on the knowledge graph. We're doing this so that we can zoom out of individual chunks and bring together contextual information that will allow us to answer questions about connected entities, going beyond simple RAG. This higher level context can only be acquired if we summarize the chunks that belong to the same community. Here's where the relational AI native app is used to model the knowledge graph and perform community detection in an efficient and scalable way and without moving data outside the perimeter of Snowflake. So let's recap the task again. We have been asked to use our own corpus as a source of truth, answer complex questions on the corpus such that standard RAG cannot, and finally have all our data reside in Snowflake. With that, let's take a look at how we can deliver this. First, we shall ingest the corpus from a public Azure storage account into the Snowflake table named Corpus. We shall then use Snowflake Cortex LLMs, specifically LAMA 370 billion, to extract entities and relationships from the corpus, storing them in table nodes and edges, respectively. These artifacts will then be used as downstream inputs to the relational AI native app to model the knowledge graph, do community detection, and answer input queries. The application we will build together consists of a Snowflake and a Jupyter Notebook part. I'm using a Jupyter Notebook to interact with the relational AI through its Python library. I could also have used other tools such as VS Code or a notebook from within Snowflake. So let's start with part A, in which I will show you how to set up your Snowflake artifacts and process the corpus to extract entities and relationships. For this part, we just need to run the provided SQL script and execute it in a Snowflake SQL worksheet. The script creates a database, schema, tables for the corpus and community summaries, as well as all the Snowflake UDFs for prompting the LLM for entity and relationship resolution, summarization, and question answering. Finally, it executes the entry point UDF, which extracts the entities and relationships from the corpus and stages the data in table nodes and edges for later consumption by the relational AI native application. The script should not take more than a few minutes to complete. Note that you must have sufficient privileges in Snowflake, such as being able to create a database, a schema, and a warehouse to execute the script. After the SQL script has finished, you should have a new database, a schema, 
and all the supporting database artifacts, for example, UDFs and procedures. You should also have tables, nodes, and edges, which will provide the data stream sources for modeling the graph with the relational AI native application. Let's take a look now at the data in these tables. So, table nodes contains all entities extracted from our corpus. Observe that the table columns include the type of the entity, for example, whether it is a person, a company, or some other type, as well as the ID of the corpus chunk from which the entity was extracted. Similarly, table edges contains relationships between entities. Observe that the table contains the originating entity, the target entity, the relationship type, and the ID of the corpus chunk from which the relationship was extracted. Let's move on to part B, in which I will show you how to build a relational AI graph, do community detection and answer questions with GraphRag. We will first import the Python libraries that we will need, including the relational AI Python package. This package is a declarative query builder that lets you model relationships between entities in your data. Next, we need to set up a Snowflake session. To do so, we need to provide our own credentials to the Snowflake connector for Python, in particular username, password, and account information. All other fields should remain as provided in the notebook. This notebook also provides an easy way for provisioning a relational AI engine a setting up of the Snowflake data streams that will keep our Snowflake tables and relational AI model in sync. Running those cells will create the engine, if one has not been provisioned already, and will set up the data streams. It is now time to create our relational AI model. To do so, we define an entity and a relation type and link them to the source snowflake tables, which are nodes and edges respectively. Let's also run some optional queries to get an idea of what our data looks like. Let's retrieve the known properties of each relational AI type. Following this, we can get a representation of the entity relation type in a pandas data frame. Finally, we can get the count of entity and relation types we can see that we have 660 entities and 678 relations in total. Let's now proceed with creating the graph, performing community detection and visualization of the graph. To do this, we link a graph type to a relational AI model as shown in this cell. Note that we also compute community identifiers by applying the Leuven algorithm on our graph. We can see how each community is represented with a different color. We can easily zoom in and out of the graph to take a closer look at the data. Now it's the time to do a summarization of all corpus items that belong to each community. To do so, we gather all corpus IDs per community and we use a LAMA 3 70 billion Snowflake Cortex model to summarize. We also store the summarization results for each community to table community summary. Note that this is a relatively long running process and should take a few minutes to complete. Also note that it is okay to get a couple of errors as only a few entities are not related with the corpus ID. Having prepared our data, it is now time to do question answering. First, we will iteratively go through a window of summaries, provide them as context to the LLM along with the input query, and ask the LLM whether any of the summary windows contain information that can answer the input query. We retain the summary windows that contain such information and pass them as context to the LLM so that it can answer the input query. We can see that the question has been effectively answered with this method. We will now visualize the graph again highlighting the entities that exist in the generated answer, that is, Samuel Harris Altman, Elon Musk, and OpenAI. Note that the entities are members of the same community, albeit having been extracted from different corpus chunks. Also note how the entities are connected with each other. 
The relational AI Python library also allows us to validate whether two graph nodes are connected by testing whether there exists a path between them. We can see that entities Samuel Harry Saltman and Elon Musk are indeed connected. In this demo, we have seen how to do graph rag with a relational AI native application. I hope you enjoyed this demo and I'm really excited to see what you will be building in the future. Thank you for watching.